Howdy there and welcome to the 15th episode of The Random Talks where we speak about everything and goddamn nothing at the same damn time. Can you tell me if that was good? I don't I don't know if that was good, but I just, something about the hat. I spontaneously ended up going to New York last week and while I was there, I already had an episode edited for you guys, which was supposed to come out last week because... I'm thinking about doing something from now on, but it was supposed to be out last week and I lost the footage because I lost my SD card. So if someone ends up finding my SD card somewhere in New York, can you give it back? Actually, no, keep it. It'll be like vintage or something. So in the future, someone can sell the SD card for like what, like two mil? But to wrap that up, the last episode was going to be really good, but I hate recording something over because I feel like it's just not as authentic. So maybe in the future, I'll cover what I was speaking about in last episode. But now today, as per usual, we're getting controversial because this is something that I genuinely started thinking about one day. And I was like, oh, video idea, video idea. And I was like, wait a minute, not even a video podcast idea podcast because you guys know i'm gonna have a fucking vlog channel soon so but that's that's another conversation of course i took to reddit and like always someone has thought about what i have thought about and there's already a discussion being made and and now i and now i get to make content about it you see how just life just it's it's i'm t- when i tell you i love this little life why do straight usually cis women get away with fetishizing gay slash bi men. I seriously do not get it. From those creepy yaoi fangirls to when you see the results on sites like Cornhub, straight women just get away in any single setting with creepy fetishizing of gay slash bi men. And no one seems to take this seriously. Fetishizing gay people of any gender is wrong. Yet there's this weird acceptance with straight women fetishizing gay men in society. There's one argument that I've always heard, which is that straight erotica is usually centered around straight men and not women. So women use MLM erotica. But isn't that just trying to justify fetishization? Why not just make specific erotica centered around straight women than having to fetishize gay slash bi men as a result? It's not right that gay slash bi men have to take a risk of getting fetishized by straight women just because straight erotica is directed at men. Someone replied to this comment saying, so I'm a trans woman who has identified as a bi man in the past and now identifies as a bi woman. I've seen the fetishization go in both directions and here's the thing, I 100% agree with you that the fetishization of queer men by straight women is a thing and a genuine issue. Although I've actually seen it talked about a fair amount in gay communities, but the reasons it's called out less and taken less seriously than the fetishization of queer women by straight men is that it's so much less universal and dangerous. Note for instance, how so many corn sites will have a straight section and a gay section and all the lesbian stuff will be in the straight section because the purpose of it is to entertain straight men. To a large degree, WLW women are treated as existing and entertaining straight men. And that just isn't the same with MLM people. In addition, it's far more likely to lead to violence, sexual assault, or grape in that direction. And again, I'm not saying that straight women fetishizing gay men isn't a thing or that it doesn't need to be dealt with, but the reason it gets talked about less is because it's so very much less severe of a problem. And then somebody replied to this. I'm sorry. I'm not giving my input yet. I, be, uh, it's shameful. It's sh- I have to hold what I need to say. I agree. As a bisexual trans man, reading slash fiction, gay fiction, was one way I realized that I'm transgender. Now that I'm on the other side, seeing women fetishize gay and bisexual men, I see the problem in it. Plus, LGBTQ plus communities and fan communities where most female consumers of MLM media are found are actually doing a great job of talking about this issue. Your point about this impact is a good one as well. The impact of fetishization of gay men to me mostly means rolling my eyes at badly written choppy fiction and soft boy comments. It makes sense that the brunt of the attention is on the objectively more damaging treatment of women, especially because fetishization of gay slash bi men really only happens in small fandom communities currently. And considering how horrifically the MLM treats its own members in terms of fetishization and objectification, 
Oh, that's a lot. I always feel like this argument is meant more to cut women down than actually focusing on the problem of fetishization. Last response that I have here in the thread is, girl, I did not know Kitty was behind me. That's so cute. That's so, I'm loved. I'm so loved. Guys, when you're ready, just come and look at my cat. Oh, not that cat. I'm a bisexual woman who seeks out MLM media and almost exclusively reads MLM themed fan fiction, as do many of my straight friends. I believe a huge part of that is the female characters in straight relationships in the media are often underdeveloped. Most shows and films have at least two well-rounded male characters with an interesting dynamic, while great female characters are a few and far between. I don't personally consume Yaoi, but I think it has the same problems as many animes and mangas. Lastly, you gave no real life examples of women sexualizing actual gay and bi men. The people in our life don't know and aren't hurt by what media, let alone corn, one consumes, only how we treat them. I have personally never witnessed a woman sexualizing gay and bi men in an actual interaction with them. Has that ever happened to you or someone you know? Um, yes. Before we continue, yes, it has. Just so you know, like, girl, just because it's never happened to you doesn't mean that it hasn't happened. And just because it hasn't happened to this person, if they even if they said, oh, no, it didn't happen to me, what were you going to say? Oh, so your point is, val is invalid. No, like, bro, their point is still valid, bro. Like, what are you talking about? But okay. Embarrassingly enough, my first anime was indeed a yaoi. I think I might watch it again just so I can understand what the fuck I was watching. Mind you, this came out in 2008. What the fuck? What? 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 But this realization and this entrance into, you know, not only liking anime also introduced me into a part of my sexuality I did not realize was there until I actually hit this age. No, until I was like 17. I was a little freaky ass 17 year old. Not that I was doing shit, but I was thinking about doing shit. You know what I'm saying? And when I say freaky, I noticed that I enjoy men. Like, you know, I enjoy having a strap. I enjoy, you know, being a top. I enjoy those type of things. And I learned that from MLM. I'm not sure why. I couldn't tell you what made me want to watch it maybe it was the fact that i'm not gonna lie in a lot of mlm based romance there's a lot of sexualization like they it don't even matter like y'all doing shit on a first day and and which is not a problem which is not a problem you know what i'm saying but if you look at like this person said in the reddit thread if you look at um erotica based on straight women that shit's boring. Like, it's fucking lame. Nowadays, they're starting to switch shit up. You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing some good manhwas that, you know, make the... Eh, eh. But I'm like, damn. If I was a straight woman, I would be so sad. Like, of course, they're going to go and look for something else. And the thing is, in this day and age, in this day and age, yes, straight women sexualize gay relationships more than lesbian relationships only because they're not attracted to women most of the time. Because they're straight. And it's like, for me, when I was straight, when I was straight, I just had to use that. Because I'm like, bro, like, you're never, you're not really straight, babe. But like, you know what I mean? But hey, when I thought I was straight, my um, justification for it was, hey, who wouldn't want to see two hot guys interact? Like, if they're both hot, I, this is the best of both worlds. Even in fucking hentai, like... Bro, if you go to hentai and you look at the characters, the woman be so bad and then the man looks like a thumb. What the fuck? But not even like a cute thumb. It looks like, you know those people with those small ass fucking pinky toes? I have a small pinky toe. That's why I get to say it. But you know those people with the small ass pinky toe? So imagine that small ass pinky toe. That's what those people look like. That's what the guys in the hentai looks like. So it's like, bro, women, when it comes to any type of erotica, I genuinely think these people believe that women don't get off and it's sad that women have to read you know mlm to feel something but i kind of get it or even when it comes even if it's not a fucking smut or anything erotic i feel like there's only five tropes that straight women can actually you know identify with and cool it was cool the first time but that shit gets old it gets played out it gets boring like there's no substance and then when it comes to mlm there's like some type of substance so like i said to a degree i get it but that is a problem 
Like there are straight women that do sexualize gay relationships and I've seen it happen in real life. I've even seen straight women say, oh my gosh, she's too hot to be gay. So what the fuck is gay people supposed to like? Only ugly people? God. Like what? We, what? Oh my gosh, she's too hot to be gay. They always get the good ones. What the fuck? You're acting like, I don't know. Most of the people on this earth, I don't identify as fucking straight. Babe, maybe it's not the people that's gay. Maybe it's you. Maybe it's you. Maybe these hot people don't want you because you, you're you ugly. Maybe not on the outside, but on the inside, you're fucking ugly. Imagine hearing a bitch say, oh my gosh, they always get the good ones. I've heard that. And like my face literally goes, what the fuck is gay people supposed to like then? The bottom of the barrel? What, because they're gay? I know I was chatting a little bit, but I just, it was just something I needed to bring up because I thought about it and I was like, I can see why this is an argument. And the thing is, I can't really say too much because as a woman that's not straight, it's that's not really, it's not my place to go and speak for straight women. And it's not my place to speak for gay men. That's y'all, y'all gotta have that conversation because I'm just, I'm just looking. I can come from the point of when I thought I was straight, which like I said, me looking into MLM showed me that Oh, I like this side of a man. Oh, I like I would like to do this to a man or I would prefer to be in this state. Like there was it was just something about the type of dominance cuz you know sometimes there's a top and bottom or there's a switch whatever the fuck. I noticed what I liked when it came to men and Yowie made me notice that. But that might not be the case for every woman. Not every woman is over here pegging a nigga. And I get that. And I'm not going to sit here and judge the bitches that are. And I'm not going to judge the bitches that aren't. But who I am going to judge is no one because it's not my conversation to have. And here's the fun part. I'm acknowledging the problem. I'm saying that it's there. The conversation's being had. But this is where gay people and straight women figure out, you know, what they want to do. Because I just, I cannot, I can't speak in... I can't step in any of their shoes and act like I would know how it feels because I wouldn't. Now, maybe if the conversation was talking about how straight men fetishize, you know, lesbians, which that's another conversation for another day. Matter of fact, I should have found a way to in incorporate that into this conversation because that would have been perfect. Because tell me how, quick story time, I have a little yeah. And I tell a little yeah, I'm like, just so you know, like, you know, I still like women. That's a thing. I'm gonna be wanting women because I'm not in a relationship right now personally and I don't want to be one anytime soon but you know I'm still a woman that's not straight but I still like men so I'm like yeah just so you know like this is what it is do gonna talk about oh as long as they're not like masculine so my type like what are you talking about the only time I will really like a feminine woman is there has to be not a masculine trait but a masculine aura that's when I like feminine women, which a lot of feminine women don't have that masculine aura. So I'm like, bro, you think that I'm going to like a woman based off of what you like as a straight man? You think you get some? And that's where he got it fucked up because it's like, baby, that's not for you, baby. What do you thought that pussy for you? Boy, that's my meal. I'm not sharing. Do you get it? The straight men sexualizing, you know, woman. So I get that's where I can understand why the conversation is being had, basically. This is just something that I noticed growing up because I had friends that were in the community, in the anime, in the manga, in the manhwa, in the, even the fucking K-drama communities. Oh my gosh, even down to the fucking K-pop shipping. Oh, oh. Guys, okay, we need to be speaking about how badly these fans sexualize K-pop artists. Y'all are not noticing they are co-workers like these people work together you're you're shipping this one man with another man i just want you to put yourself in the shoes of a k-pop artist so hopefully most of you work if you don't girl get a job and you'll understand what i'm talking about imagine putting your life into your craft and it all be watered down to a fucking ship with your coworker. Like y'all are not understanding the sexualization in the K-pop community is weird. Like it's not weird, it's weird. Y'all need to acknowledge that yes, sometimes they're friends, but sometimes they're not even friends. They just acknowledge each other as coworkers. And you guys stuck in your delusions, stuck in your delusions. You guys sit here and sexualize these people with their coworkers. Imagine how disgusting and repelled they feel by their own 
fans. It's weird. I never understood how people can sit here and dehumanize other people that they're supposed to support and love and, and protect. Oh, protect him. Protect her. Bitch, you literally sexualize them with their co- Like, that's weird, bro. I'm not gonna... And then even sometimes it's not even their coworkers. It's like, oh, people from other bands, people from other... No, bro, that's their peers. It's still weird. They have to go into a room and see them. A K-pop artist could walk past another K-pop artist and fart and they're like, oh my God. <laughs> They're meant to be together. And then God forbid they actually get in a relationship and then you burn down their house. Like, I just, I don't understand. What do you want? Do you want them to be in a relationship? Do you not want them to be in a relationship? What do you want? You sit here and you ship these artists every single day and then God forbid they actually end up in a relationship and you burn down their home. That's a conversation that really needs to be had in the K-pop community because when you see comments and when you see videos, people speak about it, but there's never like a person that's sat in front of a camera and actually acknowledged it. I mean, not from from my knowledge. I've never seen anyone actually talk about it. And yeah, look, listen, bring the fandoms, bring the fandoms here so it can be talked about because maybe this is an intervention. This is a safe space, but that kind of behavior would not be accepted here, girl. Not on my motherfucking watch. And the thing is, it sucks because I used to be a really big K-pop stan, but not only did the sexualization of the K-pop artists kind of deter me from wanting to be in the fandoms, but just the overall, like, it feels like watching a bird in a cage when it comes to artists. Because, yes, I do care for these artists and I love their craft, but that's all they are. Even sometimes they're not even their craft. They're just something to look at, something shiny to look at. And if they're not the most conventionally attractive, they're just something to listen to. Oh, let's say, uh, they're an object. And it's, it's sad. So I really think that's what kind of made me stray away from the K-pop community. And also the fact that like K-pop lately is kind of lame. <sighs> I just wanted to be the one to say it, bro. K-pop in fucking 2016. First of all, K-pop from the 2000s was already on fire. But K-pop from like 2016 to like 2020, bro, the bitches ain't got shit on them. I'm sorry. Like y'all are literally dust to K-pop from what? Girl, don't even get me started because somebody gonna cry and piss in the comments and I'm not cleaning it up. I'm gonna make you lick it. Girl, I don't give a fuck. That's another conversation, but don't comment some fuck shit or some dumb ass shit and expect me to be one of them basic YouTubers that's gonna ignore it or delete the comment. I'm going in the comments and we can ball. We can ball. I'm not one of them. You don't understand. This is not my full-time job. Now, maybe when this is my full-time job, I'm going to clean up my act, but I don't get paid doing this hoe. Fuck you. I don't get paid doing this hoe. Fuck you. And fuck your mama. And fuck your baby. Don't fuck your baby. Fuck your daddy. I'll fuck your daddy. If you fine, fuck you. This will be my full-time job this year though. So maybe I shouldn't be doing too much. But just know if you go low, I will go lowest. Now let's get into my latest obsessions. And for my first latest obsession in the anime category, we have here Love of Kill. Now I've watched this anime already, but I wanted to rewatch it because in my mind, I don't remember shit. Y'all know I got bad memory. Like I said, the fucking therapist said it's because of trauma. So I don't remember shit. And when I don't remember, th it's great, actually. In, in fact, it's amazing. So when I don't remember things, I just go back and I watch it or I go back and I read it. It's, it's lovely. I love this little life. Like I said, I love it. It's a big life. It's a big look at me receiving all this information and knowledge. I love it. A bounty hunter and a hitman cross his paths. After their meeting, he falls for her and starts to stalk her. She isn't keen on him, but he follows her and saves her on a number of occasions. That sounds really bad. Actually, it is that bad. He, he does. He does stalk her. Let me just give you my description because I think it'll sound a lot better if I describe what the anime is. So, you know, she's an assassin. She pulls up the work pulls up to work you know what i mean work is it's killing people um she pulls up to work and this guy does all the work for her and she's like what the fuck so then she goes to another job and he does it again she's like bro who the fuck is this guy and then she pulls up again and he's like bro let me take you out and she's like are you fucking are you fucking see I'll, I'll, I'll fucking kill you and he's like uh, 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 are you gonna take me on a date first like can you just can you just can i, can I just take you out please i'd like you and it, the whole reason why he want to take her out is because she don't smell like ass the whole reason that he wants to take her out is because he's like, you don't smell bad to me. You're the only person that doesn't smell like shit. 
I want you. It's like, bro, like, bro, I took it. I took a shower today. Like, what do you mean? And you know what? And you know what? They did tell me that um, in Japan, you can't really find deodorant like that. That's what I heard. So maybe he was like, girl, you put on deodorant? Fuck. I don't know. That was a joke. I mean, I did hear that. I did hear that. And I also heard that, like, you can't find, like, tampons. Was that Korea or Japan? That's actually the only anime that I have on here. So I'm going to just quickly move on to music. Where the first song we have here is The Lost Soul Down by NBS PLV. The only lyrics that we got here is me, you love me, me. It's not a lyric kind of song. It's just like a vibe where you just be, mm-hmm. For some reason, it makes me want to catwalk. Bow, bow. Bow. So imagine I just walk into the club. This is like my walk-in music where I'm like, hey girl, what's up? Cringe, cringe, cringe. But cat cam, cat cam. When this becomes my full-time job and I fucking move out of this shitty ass roach infested apartment that I'm in. Oh, I ain't got roaches like that. When I move out of this dingy ass dirty apartment, I'm gonna get a cat cam for the podcast because it's just, look at this. I love how I said, look at this, and then she walked out of the frame. Original, real original. The quote I have here is from Map by the Stars by DuckTales, and it says, we can get connected. Just look up and follow your own star. There's nothing you can't do. You're in this alone now. Just follow your own star. Okay, that sounds a little sad, but for me, it's kind of bittersweet because when I first moved out of my mom's house, this song kind of got me through the fact that, you know, I'm alone. I do have goals. I do have a life I'm trying to maintain. And I'm going to have to do it on my own. Like before I was doing it with my mom's help, with my dad's help. But where I am right now, like I've I've done this by myself. And even this podcast, like I said, this is a one woman show. I edit, I do lighting, I do marketing, I do vi like I do everything. So this song, especially right now in my life where, you know, I'm finally starting to receive the flowers for my efforts. And I, I'm I'm really happy that people are genuinely enjoying the podcast because I'm not I'm not gonna lie. Like I've always dreamt of not being a YouTuber necessarily or a podcaster, but being able to make an income for being myself i've always known that i don't want to say i'm a star but i've always known that i have a type of personality that people are naturally gravitated towards like it's not that i think i'm the shit it's just i genuinely think that i can have a connection with a wide range of people it doesn't matter who's in the room like at some point yeah because you know my social anxiety it was hard for me to make friends and things of that such but now that i'm becoming more into myself and i've become more comfortable with who i am bro I could talk to anybody and, and make sure they have a good time or at least make sure that they're comfortable to even be around me. We could sit in silence, but I know you here, you know I'm here and I'm respecting your peace and we're vibing. That's what, like, that's what I'm trying to say. I've always known that I'm a vibe. So for me to make money or for me to be able to potentially make this my full-time job, like you guys don't understand this, this is, this is a dream for me. This is not my first channel. Also, I've had a vlog channel where I was vlogging right when I got out of school. I graduated in 2021 from high school. Right when I got out of school, I started vlogging and I was vlogging my whole experience working. I worked at Zara. I worked at this place. I did this. I, when I was studying fashion design, like I, that was what I was doing. That was my life. And I had maybe like 347 followers. Guys, when I tell you my goal for this year was to reach 500 subscribers on YouTube, you not only helped me surpass my year goal, but I think my two year goal, like I was expecting to get where I am now in two years. You guys were basically my birthday gift. By the time this comes out, it probably will be my birthday or my birthday will be coming up. But my birthday is on the 26th. It's the 24th. My channel started doing really well. What? Like 10 days ago, 14 days ago. Like I'm just, I feel so blessed to be where I am right now and we're at what 7k and I know for some people they're like what you're only at 7k like the thing is have you been in a room with 50 people that's a shit ton of people so for 7k people to fuck with me and watch my videos and then some people to actually come back and watch my videos and comment like bro bless like I'm so thankful I know this just randomly got deep but I just wanted to make sure that people know I'm very surprised 
by you being here, but also really thankful. Because at the end of the day, despite me sitting in front of this camera and people liking what I put out there, I genuinely enjoy talking shit. So that's what this podcast is for. So I was going to do it either way. Yes, I am thankful. I'm very thankful. In fact, I'm very thankful, but I was going to do this shit regardless. And that's the thing about loving what you do. If you love what you do, yeah, the money, the money, the money, especially in this economy. Whoo, girl, I need to pay these motherfucking bills. Girl, I need to pay these bills. But that's why I get my big ass up. I go to work at 1030 in the morning. I stay there till like eight o'clock. I change, come in front of this camera and I talk shit for an hour or two because it's what I like to do. This is my way of releasing stress. And I call this my work as well because eventually it will be. I call this shit my work. I'm like, I got to leave work to go to work. I sure will. But I love doing what I do for work. I love doing what I do. I love talking shit. I love sitting in front of you. I love having good conversations that other people wouldn't talk about. Yeah, I do this shit with my homegirls, but you guys are my homegirls too. So I'm going to sit here and I'm going to do what I do. I know I went on a little bit of a tangent, but that's why to some people, this song is just like a regular ass song talking about don't give up on your goals, don't give up on your dreams. But this song literally helped me when I was, you know what I mean? I was on my, I was on my ass. The last song I have on here is Wine by Ju Young featuring G Soul. I was going to say the Korean lyrics, but it's so embarrassing that I'm like, do I really want this on the internet? So I'm going to read the translated lyrics and then try and sing the Korean lyrics. I don't know. I'm just going to, whatever. Memories that were in an empty glass. I emptied it quickly. Girl, you better realize it's too late now turn around and leave me. In English, it sounds so fucking lame, but when you listen to it in its native fucking tongue, fire, bro. F- okay, let me just, hold on. Oh, okay. Oh, girl, you better realize for shows you guys don't know this you guys don't know anything about me you're, you're fairly new to this this fucking channel you're fairly new to me you're fairly new to you're getting to know me in fact the show i have here is hermandi the diamond bazaar when I tell you this is actually one of the most beautiful shows I've ever watched. First of all, y'all snapped. Oh my gosh. Like, I need to go and look at who the director, who everybody was on this fucking team. And every, every single one of them deserve a dollar. I don't know if I'm going to be the one giving it out, but I'm I'm saying what they deserve. They deserve some money. I was just fucking around. They definitely deserve more than a dollar. But it's like, bro, everybody, everybody on this team deserves some type of fucking, I really hope, checks were cut because there's no way that they put out such a masterpiece when I tell you visually an experience, uh, 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 audibly an experience, when I, uh, emotionally, emotionally an experience invested. Inve- I think I might rewatch it. And I watched it very recently. I think I watched it like, what, two weeks ago? I have to rewatch it because being in the space... Let me read the description of the show for you. Just give me one second. The series is set in the Hermandi district of Lahore, British India, between 1920 and 1947, and follows the lives of Ta wives, courtesans, their patrons, and revolutionaries during the Indian independence movement. The series explores themes of love, power, freedom, and the woman's struggle and desires, and incorporates music, dance, poetry, and seduction. And exactly what more do I need to say for you to begin watching it? What more do I need to say? What more do I need to say? There's everything in there. They thought of everything. that sh- I just, oh, when I tell you, like, this is one of the greatest shows that I've watched in a long time. Do I like what happens at some point of the show? No, not every person is going to win. And I had to accept that. But when I tell you, this show is a watch. Next show we have here is Gyeongsang Creature. This one was good too. This one was, damn, I've been, go, I've been watching shit. The description is an entrepreneur and a sleuth fight for survival and face a monster born out of human greed. 
Y'all know I do the regular description and then I do my description because that description was whack. Basically, this man, he owns a pawn shop and he got some money. And at the moment, it's at that it's in that period of time where, you know, Japan was doing a fuck shit. I'm gonna talk about that later because that's that's whoa, whoa, Japan out of pocket man but when japan was doing a fuck shit and he had some bread not many korean people at the time did and he had some money one of the higher ups thinks that he's sleeping with his wife which i think they was fucking like i don't know the story behind it i know that she i was about to spoil shit but you know what i mean he think that he fucking his wife so basically he's like oh okay you want to fuck my wife go and find my mistress you have until the cherry blossoms fall to find my bitch if you don't find my bitch when the cherry blossoms fall everything you have is mine and he's like oh hell no i can't let that happen because i worked hard for what the fuck i got you know what i'm saying i worked hard so he goes and he's like i need to find this motherfucking girl so he goes and he starts he starts looking around and then there's this sleuth that finds out about him and he, they're like oh he finds everyone so which is why the, the the higher up went to him and and said hey you need to find my mistress or else i'm gonna take everything you own so she goes and she finds him and she's like oh i heard you know how to find people and he's like well aren't you a fucking sleuth you know how to find people too and so they both they partner up because they need to both find people that's all i'm gonna tell you it gets good girl it gets good for my last segment the free flow segment i have a late night thought that keeps me up at night i'm not gonna do this every free flow but like i said i think a lot and sometimes i have a thought before i go to bed and i'm like oh my gosh write that shit down i was kind of heat and i have a whole fucking list of them because i've been doing this for a while there's just one here that i kind of thought of recently and I noticed recently that I feel like we should definitely throw in the air. We don't have to talk about it, but I do want it thrown in the air because the conversation, the conversation, I want it to be up for conversation. You know what I'm saying? I want it to be up for conversation. So what I have here is why are high class black models preferred hairless or with straight hair? Don't, don't bite my head off. Don't bite my head off. This is just something that I observed recently. And when I say high class models, I mean the models that are actually getting booked, the models that are actually busy, the ones that are actually being booked, busy and in the spotlight right now. Most of the dark black skin models that are in the spotlight right now either have no hair or all they wear is wigs, which as a black woman, I'm not hating on them for wearing their hair how they desire. If you want to cut your hair, cut that shit off. If you want to grow it out, grow it to your knees. If you want to wear a wig, tuck that shit in that hair hat. I got my shit in the hair hat, but the problem I have here is not necessarily with the women. It's with the agencies because it's it's one thing if it was just one person, but I'm noticing that there are several models that have this specific trait that are the only ones that are booked and busy, brother. And I'm not saying your hair necessarily defines you, but when it comes to the black community, it does, especially in America. And I'm not saying most of the high paid models all live in America, but a lot of them do have even like American agencies so it's, I'm just noticing shit and it brings up the questions of whether these agencies necessarily know how to take care of black hair, if they know how to style black hair. So these models are just like, let me buzz cut. I know I look good as fuck. My head is nice. Let me just buzz cut my shit so they won't fuck up my hair. Like, why not? I get it. Like I said, none of these statements are fact. These are just late night thoughts that keep me up at night. Let me know what you think about this thought that I have. And have you thought of this too? Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you made it to this part of the podcast, because people be clicking off when it hits like 12 minutes, which is just like, bro, I get it. You click for the banger and you didn't want to stay for dessert. Lame ass. That's why you're not going to get to know. We're doing a give. I'm kidding. We're not doing a giveaway. I'm not. I'm not at that point, bro. Just I have a lot going on right now. Y'all are not getting no giveaways, baby. It, it's not going to be for me. It's going to be from the spirit, from the Lord. It's not going to be from me, though. I'm not giving y'all shit. Not right now. I, eventually, I will. Eventually, I will. I want to. But right now, I ain't giving shit. I'm giving you a hug and a kiss through the motherfucking camera, girl. Thank you for watching this episode. If you like this episode, like it. And take care, brush your hair, and wash that motherfucking derriere, girl. Wash your ass. You like my outfit for today? It's just a little. <laughs> All right, bye.